So I'm Megan Lazovic, and with this study, we'll meet people who were kind enough to share a bit of their lives with us. So I'd like to invite you into the vehicles with our study participants, and we'll have a front seat look at what's important to our car owners today. This research is really quite new. We finished it up in May, and we conducted interviews with radio listeners who purchased the vehicle within the past three years in France, Germany, and the UK. Uh, just making sure my slides here. Okay, good. So uh, we did we did this qualitative component where we we talked to people in their cars. There were two cohorts where we had people familiar. Half the in-person interviews were done with people in their own vehicles. They drove up and we talked to them. The other half we asked people to come and instead we put them into new vehicles. The, the, this is the unfamiliar cohort. So we could really understand people's reactions to these dashboards. We were curious about the dash dash user experience and um, we asked them um, multiple questions while they're in the car um, mostly centered on the dashboard we wanted to make sure we included owners from all types of vehicles so uh, we made sure we had budget mid and luxury vehicle owners then we also did a um, quantitative research. We did 800 survey interviews in each country listed here with adults who own or lease a newer vehicle um, that, uh, that they purchased within the past three years or people who said they were about to purchase a new vehicle within, say, the next year. And here are three important findings I'd like to share with you today. First. Radio is the most listened to audio platform in the car. We perhaps heard some of this earlier today. This research confirms it. Radio's number one in the car. With all of the new technologies on the dashboard, radio is number one in the car. Second, we learned that the audio experience is a key part of a person's satisfaction in their vehicle. And more importantly, removing friction from the in-car audio experience increases a person's satisfaction with a vehicle. And third, radio is an essential part of the in-car experience. Drivers we spoke to cannot disconnect radio from the car experience. The two are linked in the minds of the consumer in every market we studied. Now, before we dive into our findings about radio specifically, let's start more broadly with a look at the in-car user experience. We asked all participants whether they were from in the, a familiar vehicle or an unfamiliar vehicle, what they liked about the dashboard. So here's a video for you. Que utiliser la radio, ça a la simplicité que j'ai genre deux clics. To use a radio is simple because I just uh, click to, uh, on the button. Modern, uh, it's quite slick. Ich finde die Aufmachung, uh, I think the presentation looks appealing. The control are the same here. I can turn something on and I can adjust the volume. DJ and the type of music it is, which is, is nice to have that, I think. I got used to the radio. I didn't need to think on where to push. It was very intuitive. The highlight is a presentation that you have here, a nice big image in the middle, and that has a nice presentation. Board to have a radio. You know, you expect that in a car, so. We heard a lot of good comments in relation to ease of use and the design aesthetic. It's certainly nice to hear vehicle owners show off their favorite features in a car or to see someone's reaction to a new feature. But what about their frustrations with the dashboard experience? Let's see the flip side now. When I was like scrolling up and down, it doesn't always register that and I have to do that a couple of times before I can actually find the station I want to. And yeah, I don't, I don't know, I just find the screen too small. When you listen to the radio, for example, this is pretty interesting. In this mode, hold on. I'll do it real quick so you can see. Then you can also see the lyrics, but now I don't know. At any rate, that sometimes, yeah, it's very sensitive. I tap around too much. And easy to do. 
I don't see the whole thing here, so I'd like to maybe, there's a lot of space here, obviously it's quite a large text, but it's, there's a lot of space here, but even things like, maybe like little images of, of some of like the, the stations, or for example, I'm quite familiar with that, so that, that might help you can put quite a few on, the, on, the, on that screen. So. I can go into my library, and I've got some playlists. It's a little bit weird doing it like this, it's a bit awkward doing it this way. And that's it. Complicated. I don't like looking at screens um, whilst I'm driving. I like to be able to just concentrate on the road. You know, press a button and it's there. If I'm flicking through for something like that, that would be driving me absolutely mad. So a lot of their complaints were in relation to the difficulty accessing their favorite audio content or wanting access to information about that content, which is really what I'd like to focus on today, audio in the car. And that brings us to our first main finding. Oh, Radio. We all want to listen to the radio. Um, I like the fact that it's got... Let's pause that video. I think I went fast, too fast. Here we go. Here we go, here's our first finding. Radio is the most listened to audio platform in the car. This finding alone justifies this research because it is so important to understand the average consumer and how they move throughout their day. And when they're moving in their car, for most people, it's with the radio. Um, and here's a first look at our survey data when I get there. Here we go, here's our survey data. We asked, which do you typically listen to most often in a vehicle? 61% of interviews said they listen to radio in the car most often. And that's more than online music services, owned music collections, and others combined. It's true across all markets that we st studied here. Radio is the most used service in the car in the UK, France, and Germany. And here's weekly reach of radio in the car. 86% of car buyers listened to FM, DAB, or DAB Plus radio in their vehicle in the last week. So radio listening is a solid habit among car buyers. Let's find out why they choose to listen to radio in the car with this next clip. Radio. We all want to listen to the radio. Um, I like the fact that it's got so many different things going on in it. I like the fact that um, you've got the breakfast show in the morning, which is sort of a bit more, it's very chatty, they get people on it, etc. And then it changes to a bit more sort of music and they've got sort of a competition that they run at sort of mid-morning. And then I like the Jeremy Vine show because it's very much um, about current affairs and then it sort of starts changing again in the afternoon back more to music and there's always something different on. Yeah, but you must mal den radio sein hören, also sind jetzt... Just weird all this sometimes. Uh, it's a good radio station also because they bring news. And particularly I know that there is some news which is very important for me. For me, driving the car is also a source of info. I listen to the results for, that I'll use it for. I can't look at my phone while I'm driving to read the news. I rely on the car to find out about traffic flows and stuff like that in my local area. That, of course, it's just a highlight reel of all the good things that people had to say about radio. Um, we also uh, went through everything and, you know, look for uh, different things that people had to say about radio. Participants shared they enjoy radio for music discovery and news and information. We also heard they liked the ability for, of radio to surprise and much more other great feedback. This is a beloved medium, especially in the car. And our survey data support that as well. We asked what are the top reasons to listen to radio in a vehicle and these are the three items that came up on top of the survey. First to get news and information, to get weather and traffic, and uh, to hear your favorite songs. Radio is how people stay connected to the world and to their local communities, especially when their eyes are on the road. 87% of recent and pr prospective car buyers agree that radio is consistently reliable. So not only is it liked, but people can also count on it to be there, and they know what to expect when they turn it on. 
75% of recent and prospective car buyers agree that radio provides a better listening experience in the car than other types of audio sources. Certainly, all of those reasons in that video we listened to before contribute to the attitude measured here. Think about how incredible this figure is. Three-fourths of car buyers think the radio is the best option in the car. Now, radio, of course, is evolving. You know this. DAB and DAB Plus radio was also a topic we discussed during our in-car interviews. Here's what participants had to say about that. But DAB, like... DB is specific, it's something specific. News and those kind of things. It doesn't actually matter, as long as it's good music, I'm flexible. Um, oh yeah, it's brilliant. I think it, it's, it makes me want to listen to the radio more often because it actually sounds m much better. It doesn't actually sound like the radio. Um, it does sound very similar to when I'm playing music from my phone, so. But with DAB, you can only get all kinds of radio shows. It's really crazy. It sounds a bit smoother on DAB. It doesn't sound as sharp. Yeah, well, it is rausch arm. Yeah. Es bietet because there's a little hissing. There are great stations I couldn't get with the other radio system, and I discovered some new stations. So I like the new display. I saved some station, and I can choose the ones that I want good things to say um, about DAB. But of course, there's still some work to do with DAB awareness. 75% of those in our survey were aware of DAB or DAB plus radio. Awareness was the highest in the UK, where 96% of car buyers knew about DAB. Most German car buyers are familiar with DAB at 84%. But awareness is lagging in France, where only 45% of the car buyer population is familiar with the term. However, most of those who are aware of DAB use it. The blue on the left side of this graph represents the percent of those who have used DAB in their vehicle. The much smaller green slice here represents those who are aware but do not listen. And the gray represents those who do not know about DAB. Certainly, there needs to be some marketing efforts to raise awareness, especially right here in France. However, this slide shows that the adoption of DAB is just one more example of how well radio does to serve its listeners. Once they know about DAB, they tend to use it. And 89% of recent and prospective car buyers who listen say they enjoy the programming they get through DAB. Again, this is bringing something to consumers that they already want, radio, and providing them with even more of it, more content to enjoy. But what happens when there are obstacles between the user and their audio content? Earlier, we saw that video of people who um, had you know, different issues with the dashboard. A lot of it related to the process of accessing audio. So this leads to our second finding. Removing the friction in the car, let me get to it. Removing friction in the car audio experience increases car satisfaction. So, Part of radio success in the car is this. 80% of recent and prospective car buyers agree it is easier to listen to the radio in the vehicle than any other type of audio. There isn't much friction in the user experience when it comes to accessing the radio. And while there is less friction there, and when there is less friction, there's more use and there's a more enjoyable experience. And why is radio easier to use? Well, in many cases, there are few to no actions needed in order to access radio. Our survey indicates that 91% of recent and prospective car buyers agree that radio is one click away. If you recall, we saw that in our videos earlier in the presentation. People want simplicity. Radio is simple. In the in-car interviews, those who were in their own vehicle had no trouble accessing their favorite stations or when they were prompted to find another station. And those who were in unfamiliar vehicles, in most cases, could find the radio easily. If the previous sections didn't already convince you of this, I'll offer this final key finding to you. Radio is an essential part of the in-car experience. 
I'm not just saying this because we've highlighted that the majority of car buyers use radio in the car or because it provides an easy, frictionless user experience. I'm saying it because people simply associate the car and the radio together. The idea of driving in a car is tied to the idea of listening to radio in the consumer's mind. It is so tied, in fact, that it is an important part of their consideration when buying a car. 91% of recent and prospective car buyers said that it was important that their next vehicle had a radio. Also, we found among those same recent and prospective car buyers that 80% would be much less or somewhat, somewhat less likely to purchase a vehicle if it did not have a radio. We asked our survey respondents to imagine a car without radio, and 86% of buyers said they would really miss having the radio in a vehicle if it were no longer available. Then we specifically asked about DAB radio. 84% of car buyers who ever listened to DAB radio said they would miss DAB if it was no longer available. This topic came up in our conversations and the in-car interviews as well, so I'll let the participants explain why radio needs to be in the car. How would you feel if radio were not available in the car at all? <laughs> that would be dread dreadful. I, I need the radio. Why would it not be available? <laughs> <laughs> I never really thought about it because as a kid I always had the radio. For me having the radio is um, its like having a trolley in the supermarket. It's essential, it's something essential to have. If there was no radio, that would be awful. I prefer uh, having no air, um, AC. I learned to drive with the radio. There was not a great choice actually, but radio is a basic equipment for a car. If someone tells me there's no radio in the car, I'd be like, what? Yes, it's important to have the radio because of the emergency signals, the alerts, if you break down somewhere, to hear about the traffic. Information can be useful. In the car at all. Um, I think that's a deal breaker. Yeah, I probably wouldn't. I wouldn't buy it. I would not buy the car if it wasn't available. I wouldn't have a car which didn't have a radio. Um, if the car did not have a radio, I would not buy the car. I should mention that World DAB has a comprehensive report with even more evidence supporting these key findings. Thank you so much for funding this important research, World DAB. Thank you. But for now, until that report is officially released, I'll just review these key findings. First, radio is the most listened to audio platform in the car, and it doesn't just win by a small margin. It is by far the platform with the most reach in the car. Second, removing friction in the car, in-car audio experience increases car satisfaction. People love their cars for a lot of reasons, but the audio experience plays a huge part in satisfaction. That's part of the reason why people use radio in the car, no friction. And finally, radio is an essential part of the in-car experience. Radio in the minds of the consumer is fundamentally, consciously, and unconsciously tied to the car. I hope broadcasters leave today feeling proud of the service they provide to people in the car. And I hope those who design or think about the design of the dashboard feel good about how much influence they have over a person's satisfaction with their car. And as the technology continues to evolve, I hope we can all work together to keep the consumer at the center of design. Thank you.